Hi everybody, so we're continuing with replication number two of Messner et al.'s piece in the Journal of Quantitative Criminology. Um, this is the article, and uh, in this second video we are moving on from tests of global spatial autocorrelation and some basic uh, examination of the distribution of our variable of interest, or outcome of interest, to look at uh, local spatial autocorrelation. Uh, so this section 4.3 and the results uh, should be a nice refresher discussing spatial dependence, spatial autocorrelation, uh, the notion of local indicators, why LISA statistics uh, or, lo or local versions of Moran's eye are particularly useful, uh, and how we go about interpreting uh, LISA maps, LISA cluster maps. Uh, the first uh, LISA cluster or set of LISA cluster maps that we want to replicate are those from figure 5. Uh, that's item, uh, sorry, that should be item 4. Item 4 in the replication exercise, not, I, I repeated number 3, so uh, we, we're going to do this one here, figure 5, and we want to replicate uh, both panels here, that is the top pa panel and the bottom panel. The top panel is a what Messner et al. call a Moran scatter plot. Uh, this is also what we've been calling a LISA cluster map. Uh, the top panel is homicide rates for 1984-88, and the bottom panel is 1988-93. Let's start with the top panel. Uh, so here's our Geoda toolbar. I've already loaded the Seattle homicides shapefile, and we've already constructed our weights matrix according to the minimum value or the minimum distance 31.85 miles uh, that will avoid having any isolates so let's generate our LISA cluster map we go to space go down to the fourth option univariate local Moran's I and <coughs> we want to pull up 84 88 as our variable of interest. We get the option to plot significance maps, cluster maps, or Moran scatter plots. We've already seen the Moran scatter plot, but let's plot them next to each other just as they appear here in uh, figure 5. So let's pick the cluster map and Moran scatter plot. And there's our Liza cluster map, and here's our Moran scatter plot. And let's right click on the map and pick 999 permutations, which is what they do. Um, and now we can sit and sit back and interpret here a little bit more, or compare, rather. So let's make this a little bit smaller and bring it next to our Liza cluster map here. So this is th this should match the top panel here, and <coughs> excuse me. It's a, again, it's a little bit hard to interpret Messner at all in this in this black and white uh, version, kind of grayscale. The high high and the high low are unfortunately the only ones that we can really uh, distinguish here. The high lows seem to be the darkest ones. Those should be the pink values here. And one appears to match, but no, none, two others don't appear to match. The high high is the gray value right in the middle of the of the map in Messner et al. And that appears to match uh, in two units. If we did randomization again 999 times or a thousand times, just kept running this, it's 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 conceivable that we might get uh, slightly different results, but we're, we're in the ballpark just sort of glancing at a grayscale version of this map in Messner et al. We can also see that the two outliers here in the Moran scatter plot that can be that can be identified are the same ones that are up here. The, the Moran scatter plot is, is matching closely and those would be the the one other unit that's highlighted in the Messner at all but is not highlighted in our in our uh map so they're they're too high 
their two outliers would be these two units that are highlighted here, um, and only one of those is one of our outliers. So let's move forward here and generate the bottom panel just to keep the replication going. Space, univariate, local Moran's eye. Now we want 8893. Let's pick our cluster map and Moran scatter plot. And again, let's go to 999 permutations. Let's make the scatter plot a little bit smaller and bring it over. Keep them centered here somewhat in my screen so that they stay in the video frame. And again in the bottom plot here you see a cluster of high highs in the middle. We see that cluster of high highs in the middle here. And the Moran scatter plot looks similar. We still have these outliers and on the right hand side you can barely see them the sort of highlighted in, in white. They're probably in yellow in that graph. And then the high lows in this map are just two units up here, uh, but the high lows are a few more units up across the top in their map. So there's there's a few differences between the two. Um, nothing really dramatic, um, and we're not really fully able to to see the differences given the grayscale here. If we magnify this, we might be able to see looks like the low low might be a little bit grayer. That looks like these units in the southeast of Seattle. That matches up with our units as well. Yeah, continuing with the replication, let's close these maps out and move on to um, figure six. <coughs> uh, all three panels of figure six. In figure six, you'll see that that's under the section about covariates or searching for covariates. And <coughs> there's, again, a review of some of the material that we talked about in Baller et al. Again, this is the same research team as the team that published Baller et al. Uh, this is the early sort of exploratory stage of that same project. Uh, hopefully this is encouraging to go back to the earlier exploratory publication and realize that a lot of this is, is familiar ground. Maybe that's that's encouraging as you are learning these new techniques. So let's replicate figure six here. In the top map, we have a LISA cluster map of resource deprivation affluence in 1985. In the bottom LISA cluster map, we have the homicide rates for 84-88. And then we have a bivariate scatter plot with resource deprivation affluence along the horizontal axis and homicide rates along the uh, vertical axis. So let's go back into Geoda. Uh, we'll generate the cluster map for resource deprivation 1985. Let's just generate the cluster map. Uh, 900 or a thousand permutations rather. Uh, let's generate the LISA cluster map for homicide rates 84, 88. Also a thousand permutations. And then if we go to explore scatter plot on the x-axis we can put resource deprivation affluence 1985 and we can put homicide rates 8488 on the uh, y-axis. <coughs> uh, let's try to arrange these so that we can see everything at the same time and still keep everything safely within the video frame. I'm not exactly sure when I'm recording this where the boundaries of that frame are. Uh, let's drop this down below for a second. So in figure six, you see here that um, there's a high, high segment of resource deprivation or affluence in the southwest of the St. Louis metropolitan area. We see that same uh, high, high um, 
the cluster identified in red in our own map here on the left in the top. In the bottom map we see our familiar ELISA cluster map for homicide rates 8488 with the cluster right in the center, high high cluster right in this urban core in the center. And then we've got a scatter plot with a bivariate um, graph of the relationship between resource deprivation and the affluence component and homicide rates. One nice feature of Geoda, as noted by the authors, is that as you select points, the regression line, the fitted line, changes. So if we omit this, every point that you select uh, gets omitted from the new calculation. You can see the statistics for the regression lines down below. So again, if we just point on a click on a, any blank space on the map, we deselect any of the points. So the first line <coughs> is the regression line. The red line is the line uh, or is the excluded point in the wait, excuse me we exclude both of these points. There we go. So if we if you pick more than one point, you see the original line is the line on top. The the second line, the line in red is the line formed by the selected points. And the data in blue, the statistics in blue are are those statistics for the new regression line excluding the selected points. So you see how it's flattened out on the bottom. This is a nice diagnostic exploratory tool, especially if you're able to identify outliers, remove outliers, um, and remember that these plots in Geoda are always linked, so all the observations that you're selecting in one plot are linked in the other plot. You'll see that over here, that b the two identified or selected observations are linked in both maps. You can all do also do something in Geoda, if you've read the Geoda manual that uh, is on Blackboard, if you hit control at least in a Windows environment and then create your square and release control and your square, you now have a movable square, what Anselin calls a brush, and you can brush across observations and pick them up in your window. This can be a very useful tool for just kind of quickly moving through and exploring your data, picking out big chunks of, of observations. You can see I'm just sort of moving around in the scatter plot and it's picking out different observations and selecting them in all of the maps that are linked to this scatter plot. If I click on the blank space again, the brush quote unquote goes away. So this replicates <coughs> the LISA cluster map of resource deprivation affluence, the LISA cluster map of homicide rates 8488, and this scatter plot showing a positive relationship between these uh, two variables. Let's close these windows and go to our fifth replication item, which is same as figure six, but with two different variables. Now we'd be going to resource deprivation 1990, and homicide rates from 8893. I won't do this replication here since it's mechanically uh, exactly the same as the previous one. Uh, also, we can't replicate figure eight uh, because the data on cash from crops is missing from the SAPE file. Uh, you might consider what other data you could uh, collect uh, relatively quickly, say from census or other sources in order to replicate the similar findings. Uh, so let's go to the final replication item, figure 9, and <coughs> excuse me, do both panels here. If we look at the article, you'll see that figure 9 appears at the very end on page 446, and essentially you want to redo the ELISA cluster map for average homicide rates from 88 to 93, and then overlay a histogram of our primary predictor of interest, resource deprivation affluence, and compare the two. Um, so let's do that quickly in Geoda. Go to space univariate to generate our 
lies a cluster map of homicide rates 8893. Let's just generate the cluster map, do a thousand randomizations. And if we go to explore, our first option is histogram. And we want resource deprivation affluence component from 1990. And there it is. So let's maybe try to shorten this up a little bit. Uh, those should all still be in the in the video frame. And so essentially what we see here, if we are to click our or select our um, high, high homicide cluster around the urban core of St. Louis, let's, if we click on these items, you can see them linked in the histogram of resource deprivation affluence. And you can see that they're right in the center of the distribution, maybe not exactly in the same center, but we're moving this core is out on the on the outlier, is, is out here on the far right of the histogram. But otherwise we're moving around the center of the distribution here. If we look at the low, low clusters, um, we see that these are all much more closely packed around the center of the distribution. So the, the low, low clusters of violence all oscillate between uh, the tallest bar, the modal category in the histogram, and the third lowest, or the third highest bar, rather. Uh, whereas the high violence cluster um, is all over the map in terms of uh, resource deprivation affluence. We could check this with the other low that's also in the center, it's also in the center, and it's also in the center. So all of the cores of statistically significant low, low clusters of violence have kind of modal or average uh, values on the resource deprivation affluence component. We might think more systematically about what this means in terms of uh, violence prevention, violence um, uh, violence reduction, whereas the the high high clusters seem to see this one is out on the far right here, and then the others are spread around three different categories of resource deprivation. Over here we have high low, and this is where if we had the the data on cash crops, we could look into uh, more of this notion of barrier counties that Messner et al. Um, elaborate on in this piece. And that's the last um, core result in the Messner et al. piece. So that's a quick replication of the core key findings in this piece. Again, one of the interesting things that you could do as an extension of this replication is to collect data on cash from crops from uh, another source and merge it with this data or collect a proxy variable that captures that kind of uh, rural environment or captures rurality um, farmland um, as argued by Messner et al. and that might get at this notion of barrier counties. Uh, so hopefully this is useful and uh, a nice refresher on some core concepts and tools in spatial analysis, especially the exploratory techniques. Thank you.